Because we must deal with that. It must be addressed. Because there are some marriages who are just blatantly wicked. They're so comfortable. When you no longer feel conviction, that's dangerous. I mean, there's just some husbands who are just living so comfortable in adultery. There are some people, they have no fear of God, no reverence. They don't care. That is a dangerous mindset. And there's people out there like that. Now, that's hard for many of us to understand, those of us who are in alignment with God, those of us who have discipline and self-control. We have a, sometimes a hard time um, understanding that there are people out there who just don't care. There's people right now that's living in sexual perversion in their marriage. They're comfortable, but they don't care about going to hell. There are some people who know that they're going to hell and they're okay with it. See, because everybody that's lost in sin is not in the, the uh, Nile. I've seen these type um, people before who are just lost in sin. They do not care. They know that they're not saved. They know that they're religious. They know that God isn't pleased. They know that if they were to die today, they're going to hell. That's sad. And that's something that they fully embrace. And there are some people who want to go to hell. They literally want to go to hell, even though they have no idea how horrific it's going to be. They, there are some people who are married, who are so full of, of just evil and sexual perversion in their marriage. They do not care. They want to sin as much as they can and engage in so much sexual perversion as much as they can. They do not care. Oh, there's no fear. There's some people, there's no fear at all. Some people are reprobated. They just don't care. They, they turn a deaf ear and their hearts have been hardened. And the Bible talks about this, that, you know, how the heart can be so desperately wicked. Who could ever know it? My goodness. And that's a sad reality. Again, I want to pause for a moment and say that all marriages are not like this. There are some husbands who love God and who is faithful to their wives. And there are some wives who love God and is faithful to their husbands. So let's keep that in mind. But there's a different group out there that is lost in sin. And there's many marriages who their whole household got torn apart. And they wish they would have never engaged. Because now kids are hurting. It hurt family members. And once you do this and you bring this damage into your family, even after God forgives you, the thought still remains. I always talk about bad decisions have a way of becoming a punishment on its own. Shame, guilt, and condemnation, even after God forgives you. There's people right now who hurt their children. They hurt their husband. They hurt their wives because they've done this and they if, if they could take it back, they could. See, the enemy never tells you the outcome. He just tells you the feeling and the stimulation that you will get from this. But he never shows you the destruction because he wants you to focus and hone in only on the sinful pleasure of adultery. And this is why we must keep the marriage bed holy. Because there's, there's some men who don't mind sharing their wives. Man, that's, that's a sad reality. They get a kick and a rise out of other men and women engaging in sexual sin with their wife. At that moment, there's a stronghold of sexual, of sexual perversion, and it must be destroyed only through repentance, prayer, and fasting. And there's some women, they, they want to share their husband because their debt engaged in sexual perversion at a high level, at a high frequency. And they're doing a good job for Satan. The enemy loves it. He loves it when marriage is engaged in this stuff. God isn't pleased. You, you'll be amazed. The marriages out there who is doing this. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper. There's, man, there's different cultures who only want certain cultures in their bedroom. There's Caucasian men who want, you know, uh, uh, their wives to engage in sexual sin with black men. 
if they get a kick out of it. This demonic, this demonic fetishes, demonic sexual sin. The flesh is never satisfied. Sin will upgrade, upgrade, and it'll level up and have people doing things that's just totally outside of the will of God. And there's women of different cultures who only want a man of this specific culture because they feel like they're missing something or something they've read or something they've heard. They believe that these other men will take them to a high level of, 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 of sexual stimulation. The enemy gets in that. There are so many variables and levels to sexual perversions of adultery and how adultery can morph into other areas. There's other, there's other, um, there's other marriages who only want this type of culture in their marriage. These demonic fetishes, people can marry what culture they, they, they choose to. And that's the consequences that they have to to uh, uh, um, deal with with God if it's outside of alignment with God. We're not talking about, you know, it's sin to marry somebody from a different culture. Because if 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 two people of two different cultures are meant to be together, then that's God's will. That's just it. But I'm talking about when you knowingly, knowingly only go after certain cultures for sexual sin and sexual stimulation. God isn't pleased with that. God isn't pleased with that. And targeting certain cultures to bring into your marriage bed. God isn't pleased. The enemy is never satisfied. That's why the Bible says the enemy goes about seeking whom he may devour like a roaring lion. I mean, the enemy is so his hunt is hunting souls and leading people in hell by the by the billions. When people who share these prophetic dreams of people in hell, the screams, the stench, the smell of suffer, the, the, the smell of rotting flesh, the torture, these demons putting people in grinders and, 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 and cutting off and, and, and just putting sharp objects in their private parts. People, there is punishment for sexual sin. There's different chambers in hell of torture based off what that individual did the most when they were living. God isn't pleased with us. This is real. God is calling for repentance to anyone that's living, that's engaging in adultery. Please repent and turn from it. It's not worth it. Deal with the issues in your marriage. Deal with the issues in your marriage. Don't run to adultery. Because there are some people their spouse could be sick, their husband could have health issues, or their wives could have health issues, and they're not able to be physically intimate. The enemy gets in that. But I want you to understand that I'm sure that it's not easy, but God can keep you. People, these, God has engineered, spiritually engineered us to overcome anything. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of denial of flesh and prayer and fasting. And to those of you who want to be free from adultery, you're never going to get free until you really, really go after God in repentance, prayer and fasting, biblical study, denial of flesh to break that stronghold of adultery out of your life to be set free immediately. You're never going to be free until you obey God at a high frequency, at a high level. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I felt that one. God can set you free right now if you want it. And this is why God is calling for, for marriages to keep the marriage bed holy. Because in some cases, what leads to adultery for some people, married couples start watching pornography to stimulate the marriage bed. They start out bringing in these demonic sex toys and you know, this demonic music, worldly, lustful music. And that opens up that door to adultery, bringing in these evil spirits. Because when we sin in the marriage bed, it becomes a point of contact. When we engage in these sexual activities in the marriage bed and doing things that's not of God, bringing in other people, listening to worldly music in the marriage bed, Pornography, those evil spirits come in and you have now become a host for them 
to come in and 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 do these things. People are totally unaware. Sin draws the enemy. The best way to overcome the enemy is to never engage in the stuff and to remain in the spirit. The Bible is true. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the deeds of your flesh. Period. Walk away from it. Repent and never go back. And never pick it up again. And to that person that you feel the enemy is aggressively tempting you to engage in sexual sin of adultery, walk away from it. Don't give in. Run. I mean, run. Do what Joseph did. Run. 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 Joseph ran. Because Joseph had assignment. He ran from, I believe it was Potiphar's uh, wife. He ran. Glory be to God. That's a powerful man of God right there. That's something I would do. He ran. He ran from the presence and the snares and the tricks of what the enemy was going, was trying to do because Joseph loved God and Joseph understood assignment. Joseph understood assignment and Joseph understood his relationship with God and pleasing God was more greater than Joseph pleasing his flesh. That scripture text is powerful for men and women. Joseph ran. And that's why there's some of you. You, you, you have people who are, who are trying to press you. They know that you got issues in your marriage. That's why be careful who you tell the, the, uh, the problems of your marriage. Be careful with that because there's some people that have smiling faces and covert evil intentions. There are some women that they get a kick and a rise out of that husband having marital problems because they think that they can now manipulate him to engage in sexual sin with them because that woman wants them. There's women like that. They're very sneaky and they're very covert. Not all women, but some are like that. They love seeing a man that's in a broken marriage because they think it's their time to come in and be the other woman. And there are some women who is okay with being the other woman. I'm telling you right now, sin has the ability to morph and to level up as, as sin can level up as many times as you engage. It gets worse. Sin strengthens it. Sin can strengthen over and over again. There are some women who've got so, so deep into sin that they are okay being the other woman. They're okay with it. They're okay. And there's some men that's okay being the other man. And then you have another group of marriages who they only want to pursue married people because they figure it's low risk. They only want to pursue people who have something to lose just like them. That's why they go after only married folks. Because they figure it's low risk. You can't trade sin for sin. There's no there's no win win here. It's a dangerous game to play this game with God. Only thinking that you're safe because you're only messing with married people like us, like yourself. God isn't pleased. You got pastors doing this. And I've seen this before in my younger years of ministry. My goodness. I've seen pastors engage in this in the church. I've seen pastors sleep with other women, pastors who was married. Does, does God hate them? No. Can God save them? Yes. If they're not reprobated and if they repent, God will forgive them. But there's still consequences. I've seen pastors who was married having sex with other women in the church, inside of the church. I mean, no fear of God, no reverence for their uh, marriage, no reverence for their children. I mean, there are some pastors. I mean, you know, they really, really done some heinous things. I mean, some things that was just literally not of God. I mean, it's bad. You got pastors right now preaching the gospel, men and women. You got women in ministry and this really grieves my spirit because there's something wrong with preaching the gospel and still engaging in adultery you got women 
prophetess, preaching the gospel and engaging in sexual sin. Bishops preaching the gospel and engaging in sexual sin of adultery. Many of them, they'll come on the pulpit extremely polished and intellectual. And they're nothing but wolves in sheep clothing. Now, all pastors don't do this. All church leaders, men and women, do not engage in adultery. I must say that, but there's some that I do. The Bible talks about that, for it is better not to have known the ways of righteousness than to have known it and to turn from it. I mean, that's a trigger for God to flirt with faith, with no desire for repentance and to still touch the things of God. There's people right now who is engaging in adultery and they're working the altar call transferring these evil spirits of perversion and that's why there's some people who just can't get free because you have evil people in sexual sin working the altar you got evil musicians that's playing that's playing church music and they're engaging in sexual sin of adultery and they're on their way to hell there's some people right now if they were to die right now they're living below the standard of repentance and holiness in hell is their place. And there's no getting out. You got people in the choir singing songs of praise and living comfortable in adultery. Sunday school teachers teaching the gospel to children and getting excited about their, their next act of adultery. God isn't pleased. Touch, there's something about being comfortable in sin with no fear and no reverence. God is calling for repentance right now. Walk away before destruction hits. I remember there was a, a, uh, a YouTube influencer. I think he passed away, I think, a, a year ago. And he, he had a huge platform. And I could see destruction all over them. And one of the, the, the things that he was engaging in was sexual sin. I could see it um, through the spiritual lens and through, through discernment and the prophetic. And his life ended just how the Lord had revealed it to me. Now, those of you who know me, I don't do clickbait. I don't put uh, people's uh, pictures of other people's, uh, you know, personal pictures on my channel. I'm not trying to go viral. I'm not trying to uh, build my name. I don't, I could have easily did what many of them do to grow this channel bigger. And people know that the only way to grow bigger is to, to feed off big names and big name pastors and bishops and trending topics and, you know, talk about people that have big names and put that on your thumbnail and make that be your subject matter. I would never put a picture of another pastor or preacher on this channel. Never, 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 because I'm not trying to be famous, but I will use it as a reference. Now I could have took that information that, that I knew and put the person's name up before it happened, but I'm not trying to be famous. I'm not trying to, 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 I'm more, it's more important for me to please God than it is to lace my pockets with YouTube monetization. Deliverance and breakthrough would never be monetized. I have no interest. The gospel is top priority. God will take care of me and my family. He's proven to do that at a high level. I don't have to do clickbait to grow. I won't take the bait. And I'm sure the enemy would love for me to do that, but I won't because it's about the gospel and not about clickbait and using other people's pictures to draw a crowd. God isn't pleased. You got people even on YouTube posting, posting spiritual content and they're engaging in adultery. Adultery comes in many levels. Because there's some that they they think they're safe because they commit what they call emotional adultery. To where there is no, there's no sex, there's nothing 
um, you know, there's the obvious of sexual sin is not being done, but there's an emotional connection and the enemy is able to smoothly covertly link them to adultery there emotional adultery is just as dangerous as doing it the bible talks about that if a man lusts after a woman in his heart he's already committed it oh this is bigger than just physical it's spiritual it's emotional it's physical. There are so many ways the enemy can trap people in this. That's why it isn't God's will that we have these demonic sex toys. There are some women who wasn't being pleased at home. And they went and bought a, a, a sex toy that resembles the private parts of a man. But that wasn't enough. See, the, I'm telling you, the devil is never satisfied. And then they, they wanted the, the, the full-blown physical experience. The flesh is never satisfied. And the same thing goes with the a man going out purchasing, uh, you know, female sex toys to kill the urge. And that ended up being, and that wasn't enough. And they wanted the full blown experience. God isn't pleased. There's a bunch of men and women, husbands and wives who are going to these dating sites. These, these, these chat lines. God isn't pleased. Those things are demonic and they're not of God. Deal with the issues in your marriage because God loves you and he can bring deliverance. Adultery is not the way. Deal with it. Deal with it. God isn't pleased. And I'm going to deal with that too. These, these, these chat lines, these websites that, 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 that promote adultery. And some of you have engaged in same gender adultery. There's some women who wanted their first uh, encounter with a woman and they're married and they opened up that door. God isn't pleased. He's calling for repentance. And there's men who engaged in their first, uh, you know, sexual experience with another man because sometimes it's not a woman, it's a man. There's some women who think that their husband is with another woman and it's a man and they're bringing that, that filth home. God isn't pleased. There's people right now that caught STDs from adultery. And there's no turning back. There's consequences for sin. The safest place to be is into position and into alignment with God at a very high frequency on a daily basis. I get it. It's a daily battle. It's a fight because the Bible talks about the flesh and spirit are contrary to one another and they are just, it's a battle a spiritual and natural battle. Many of you have no spiritual weight. You have no armor and you're exposed and you're wide open. And the reason why many of you can't get free because you're, you're feeding yourself the things of this world at a high frequency and you have no spiritual, you're, you're, you're bankrupt in the spirit. Yes, God loves you, but he hates sin. I don't want no one to go to hell because of sexual perversion. And the souls that are in hell, go, go to a beach, go to an ocean. You ever see how big the ocean is? Imagine that just people. Look at all the sand on the beach. That's, the, that's how many people is going to be in hell because of sexual sin. Sexual sin is one of the top premier weapons that the enemy used to those who are not grounded in God. And we thank God for those who are faithful, those who love God, those who are faithful to their spouses, those who, who, walked away, who walked away from adultery and they never went back to it. They never went back to it. And be careful who you tell things about your marriage. I say this, watch out for smiley faces. Watch out for smiley faces with hidden agendas. See, I'm able to pick up on that because I love God and I'm sensitive in the spirit. I see a lot. Rather, I have admitted it or not, I see a lot. And I'm able to pick up on that quickly. Be careful who you tell things about your marriage. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you confide in. 
There's some people who who act as if they're concerned about you, but truly they want you for themselves. The enemy loves a broken marriage. He loves a wife that's not pleased. He loves a husband that's not pleased. There's, there's, there's just some people that they're just not happy in their marriage. They have poor communication. There's no romance. There's no love. And the enemy gets in that. Before you do that and go out and commit adultery, run from it. Deal with these issues. Run from it. It's not worth it. Run from it. And never go back. Never go back to it. There's people. There's people out here that God delivered from adultery, that God set them free from adultery, and they never went back to it. Never. They never went back to it. I mean, never. And they owned it. They accept the consequences for their poor decisions. Some people have lost their marriage. Because of adultery, they repented to God, but they still lost their marriage. They have broken relationships with their children because of uh, adultery. There are some people who, who got somebody pregnant because of adultery. They repented. They made things right with God. They took responsibility for their decisions to be in this child's life, but they still, there's still consequences. Again, I'm confirming what God has already told you. You feel the conviction. You sense the, the conviction. Turn from it. I want you to understand that, that repentant conviction does not always lead to repentance. There's a lot of people right now who are convicted daily. I mean, it's aggressive. And they grieve the spirit because they won't respond with repentance. They, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll grieve the spirit daily. There's people that was convicted for 20 years of adultery, but they never repented of it. Conviction does not always lead to repentance. But hell is real. And that prophetic dream is indication that those who are living comfortable in adultery, with no repentance, they will end up in hell if there is no turning from it. Walk away from them. Tell that man, tell that woman you cannot see them again. It is over. It's done. Trash that number. Trash that private phone. Toss that email. Stay off those phone chat lines. Walk away from those websites. Leave it. Do what Joseph did. Run. Run for your soul. I mean, run. Run. Far, far away from it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Get into position and into alignment with God. God will, God can heal your marriage. He can deliver your marriage. God can keep you. He can keep you from this vicious stronghold of adultery. Let's pray. And I declare that each and every husband or wife that's engaging in adultery. I declare that true conviction and repentance shall fall upon them today in Jesus' name. I declare that that husband and wife shall walk away from adultery today in Jesus' name. I declare all strongholds of sexual perversion and sexual sin shall be destroyed out of every husband and wife's life as it pertains to adultery today in Jesus' name. I declare now that spiritual, emotional, and natural healing shall take place in these marriages today. In Jesus' name, I declare that every weapon of the enemy that's trying to bring division and chaos and sexual immorality shall be destroyed out of these marriages today. In Jesus' name, I declare that these marriages of husband and wife shall walk in peace, romance, unity, and they shall get on one accord in Jesus' name. To anyone that's, that's fighting adultery, I pray now that that chain is broken off their lives, that they would understand the power of repentance, prayer, and fasting, and walking in the Spirit, and denial of flesh to break these chains immediately today in Jesus' name. Amen. That is the word of the Lord on this day. I hope I hope and pray that something was said or mentioned that would uh, lead to repentance and salvation and a change of heart 
in the lives of others. So I thank you for dropping by the Deliverance and Breakthrough channel. I will continue to put up spiritual content as the Lord leads. Always remember, until next time, uh, be safe and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Bye.